Hello again and welcome back. So in this video, we are going to start taking a break away from matplotlib. We're going to start working with a new module so that we can produce more dynamic maps in HTML. For this video, you are not going to have to have any kind of comprehensive knowledge of HTML. The only time in which I'm going to actually use HTML is when I create a, uh, a break tag. That's nothing complicated. It's quite easy to uh, understand. So in this video, I'm going to be introducing you to a module named pyviz.network. And uh, the standard way in which we're going to import it, this is the Pythonic way of doing it, is from pyviz.network, uh, import, network, capital letters, uh, capital N. If you haven't done so, the way in which you install this uh, module is pip install pyviz, just like that, and you'll have this in your uh, Python library, uh, script library. So we're going to still, normally when you work with PyViz, you structure your data a little differently. In this video, I don't want to throw too many new things at you. So I'm going to show you how we can take uh, the data that we've processed in Network X and bring it in to PyViz to map it out the way we want to see it. So the first way in which we're going to do this is we're going to create a new graph. And this new graph, we're going to call it G2. And we're going to set it equal to network. And that's going to give us a new network map. And we need to load in the data that we have from our network X graphs so that uh, the PyViz library can handle it. And the way in which we do that is we load in g2.fromNXG. This is the from nx function. So from nx, and you want to pass in that argument of g. And that's going to load in all of our, our um, network X data that we've already worked through and, uh, and established. And even the more nuanced aspects, such as our, um, our color differences and our frequency uh, distribution. So we can actually change node size in a little bit. So once we have that typed in, we don't want to run anything yet. We need to start kind of uh, creating some, some detail. But I suppose I could go ahead and just show you what this is going to look like and how it's going to work. So when I run this, oh, it helps if I actually <laughs> tell it what to open. I want to, uh, let's do uh, network map.html. You can name this file whatever you want, but you have to create an actual file. And what it's going to do is it's going to produce something that looks like this. This is a little different than matplotlib. It's a little more nuanced. As you can see, I can drag things around. I can move them around. They have physics actually uh, built in. And we're going to go through in a little bit and show you how to play with the physics elements uh, all in the HTML. What's nice about this, though, is that it is storing everything as HTML. So if I inspect it, I can see that I can just easily embed all of this data into my actual website, which means that I can take my DH project and very easily migrate it into an HTL, uh, HTML environment. This means that users don't have to be local the way they do with matplotlib. Now, matplotlib has the ability to produce HTML uh, files and allows you to draw, drag uh, nodes around. It is, however, very limiting in how you can actually structure it. And I find for doing these more advanced processes with NetworkX, it's much better to work with PyViz. Uh, not only because you can process PyViz more dynamically in HTML, but because you have a lot more options. I think it's a more powerful library for handling DH projects that require you to look at networks. So that's what it looks like right now. We're going to go through and add some extra features because one of the things that you see right now is that we don't actually have anything uh, different between nodes. We don't see a difference in color to delineate gender. We do not see a difference in size to delineate um, to delineate the frequency. Uh, so we're going to work with that in this video, and we're going to do just that right now. So what I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to keep everything the way I have it. But what I want to do is I want to um, pass in a new, uh, a, a few new things. So I'm going to create a new object, which is going to be a neighbor, oh, neighbor map. And that neighbor map is going to be equal to g2.gidAdgList. 
And this get add list is actually going to return a list of neighbors to a certain node. So when we print off neighbor map, we will see, I'm going to go ahead and clear this for right now. We're going to see that we have a dictionary that consists of a key and a value that is in itself a dictionary. And that's basically all of the neighbors in our in our Python or in our, our data. So what we can do with this is we can start creating kind of really uh, nuanced arguments for our map. So the way in which we're going to do this is we're going to use a for loop. We're going to say for node in g2 dot nodes. And what we want to do right now is we just want to change the uh, the size of the nodes in our network map. So how we're going to do this is we're going to say node and we're going to specify the attribute of value. We want for each node's uh, attribute of va uh, value attribute to be equal to the length of uh, neighbor map. And within that neighbor map, we want it to specifically find um, its specific node ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to say node and we want it to be ID. And this is going to allow us to actually, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this for you. I'm going to print it off so you can see what's happening. Print off node value. When we run this, what we'll see is you're returning a frequency. So how many neighbors that person has in our data set. The more neighbors that that person has, the larger that node will be. And let's go ahead and map it so you can see what's happening right now. When we see it and uh, with this output, we see that Jerry, who has a larger position in the network, has a larger node. Tom, who has the smallest position in our network, and Bob and Sarah all have smaller nodes with Jeff, Jill, and Lily all having uh, uh, medium-sized nodes. So what we've done is we've changed the value of the node uh, to correspond to the number of uh, neighbors that they actually have. So the amount of connections that they have in our network map. Now we can do this in a different way. We could, instead of doing the neighbor map, we could just do the number of times that they appear in our, uh, our edges list. This, however, is the more Pythonic way to do it when you're working within PyViz. So that's how I'm doing it here. What if, however, we want to see <clears throat> we want to see uh, a network map that actually represents the different node colors. The way in which we're going to do that is we're going to say node color. We're going to affect the color attribute of the node. Now, we want to set that equal to our color map, which is the same color map that we have up here. And we want to set that color map. Uh, we want to pull the node ID. And I should explain to you why I am using uh, node ID right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to comment all of this out, actually. Let me print off what's happening in this for loop so you can kind of see what's happening in the G2 nodes uh, data. So let's print off node. This is going to just return me a, a, a list of dictionaries. Ooh, why is what's happening? All right, get rid of that. OK, so what we have here is each individual node in our graph. And each individual node has a couple different uh, attributes. They have a title, which is Tom. They have an ID, which is Tom. They have a label, which is Tom. And they have a shape, which is a dot. That's all the stuff that corresponds to uh, Tom in that node, which is coming out as a dictionary. By structuring our loop in this way, what we are telling it is to go to the uh, attribute that corresponds, the key that corresponds to the, uh, or sorry, the, the value that corresponds to the key of ID. We can do the same thing with title. I've just chosen to do ID. And what it's doing is it's pulling that specific information. So that's why we're using the, uh, this right here, this color map, uh, brackets, node, brackets, uh, in quotation marks, ID. That's allowing us to retrieve uh, that specific information. And so what I am telling it to do here is to, for the color, to go to our color map and look for the item that corresponds to that node ID, which is Tom. And in our color map, that node ID is going to be blue. So now when we map this out, 
we will see that we will have a difference in color with our people. And in fact, we do. So I'm dragging it back over here. We see a difference between Jerry, uh, Bob, and Tom, Sarah, Jill, and for some reason, Jeff. <laughs> I think I've got a mistake in the data. And sure enough, I do. I'm going to change Jeff to a male, uh, make that good. Now what we should see is Jeff rendered in blue. And sure enough, we do. So what we're seeing here is a way to actually change the color of each individual node in a for loop. What if I wanted to do uh, something a little different? What if I wanted to have something that was more sophisticated? And for, uh, I want to see when I when I go over a node, all the different neighbors that that, uh, that node might have. And for this, I'm really borrowing from the documentation on PyViz's website, which I'll include in the link below, where they sample through Game of Thrones data. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this in. I'm going to <clears throat> essentially change the title of my uh, of my data. Now the title is let me pull this up. The title is what appears right here when I put my mouse over it. Uh, I can change that title to whatever I want it to be. But what I'm going to do here, and what this is doing in, in the PyViz documentation, is it's changing that title to correspond to uh, this string. This fairly simple but elaborate string. And it's a little bit of HTML code. And what it's saying is that it's going to create the string of neighbors, colon, and it's going to have a line break. And then it's going to add in a, another line break, and it's going to join together all the different individuals who are in their neighbor map. So all the different neighbors that that person has are going to be in that title. So when we run the code, let me bring it back over, what we see is Pull this back up. What we see is the title has changed. It now allows us to have our mouse over top of a node and see all the different um, the different neighbors that that person has. Again, working with a data set this small doesn't necessarily require us to have this, but when you're working with a giant uh, data set, such as the Game of Thrones example that is on the PyViz website, you will see very quickly why having this feature is very useful. And again, I encourage you to go to that link uh, in the description below. So let's do a couple other things that, uh, that we have in our... Uh, in our abilities with with PyViz. We are going to add in g2.show. And again, this is also in the documentation. We are going to show and specifically filter or show buttons. And we want to set a filter argument equal to um, underscore equal to, and we're going to add this list. And we just want to add in the physics buttons for right now. And now we're going to map this out. And I'm going to drag this back over. And what we see here is this new physics button having been added. Why is this useful? Well, it's useful because I can disable physics entirely and have a more static map that allows me to drag and drop nodes to move them around. This is also useful because if I want to activate the physics, I can control everything. I can make it do different things by changing the gravitational constant. I can have it change the max velocity. So, I mean, you, you have full control on your website of the physics. From a user interface point of view, this is very useful because it will allow users on your website or anyone who's accessing the HTML to automatically adjust the HTML, which you can see right here, based upon parameters that are established up here. That's very, very useful. It's also useful because you can read the HTML yourself and see what's actually happening in these options. So that's all I really wanted to cover in this video. Again, I encourage you to go to the ByViz documentation and play around with some of the other features. If you are thinking about taking your DH project and putting it online in some capacity when you're working with social networks, I encourage you to experiment with PyViz. It is very powerful, it is very useful, and I've only covered some of the most basic aspects of it in this video. So that's all for right now. Thank you for listening.